guys, my name is Antranik and I'm here to help you get into the crow pose. So first thing we need is a block, like a yoga block or a box or a thick book, anything that will help elevate your feet by a few inches, okay? The other thing that's going to help a lot is a big fat pillow. So that will help in case you go too far forward and your head will hit the pillow. It will also help dramatically uh, or mostly it will help psychologically. So, let's get started. We're going to break this down into very logical steps so that everybody could have success with this. So, first thing we do is we stand on our block. We squat down. We put our knees wide apart so that our arms go in between them. Our hands are shoulder width apart. And you notice my, my arms are straight now, but we're going to lean forward and my arms are going to bend at the elbow like this, okay? And we're going to stay on our toes. We're not going to lift the feet off. So, let's get started and do this together. And let's see how we do. Now, we want to look ahead. So let's look ahead at the pillow and start leaning forward and bending at the elbows. Keep looking forward and lean forward until you get on your tippy toes. So you are just barely being supported on your tip tippy toes right there. This is the actual position that you need to be in. And it will strengthen your wrists and anything else you need to, anything else that needs to get stronger. So if you were able to do that with me, then great. We can move on to the next, next exercise. But if you weren't, keep practicing that so that you can build that up, that tippy toe supported crow pose for 20-30 seconds. Okay? So the next step is to again put the hands down shoulder width apart and again we're going to look ahead if we look down we fall down so we look ahead we lean forward lean forward until we're on our tippy toes again and then we just take one foot off and bring it up toward your butt so now you're just on one foot and now you can come back down and like this we get comfortable with the idea of more weight going on our arms and shoulders and just understanding the balance that's going to be needed so now the next logical step is trying this with two feet off and now for this we're gonna again I'm emphasizing that we're looking ahead because as we lean more forward we're going to look more forward. So, let's do this again. Let's do this together. We look forward. We lean forward. The arms are bending. We're on our toes. And then we lean forward until one foot comes off, right? And then we lean more forward until the other foot just peels off. You could point the big toes together and just get, find your balance here. Keep the belly tight. And that's about it. Come back down. So, if you were able to do that, great, awesome. If you were stuck, if you were not able to do that, you were stuck on the earlier exercises, then just work on those. As you get comfortable and you practice more, you're going to get stronger and you'll be able to understand what it takes to do the little adjustments and refinements needed to balance up there. And so I hope that helps. And one last thing I just want to say is that this is a very active pose. You can't just passively get into it and expect to stay up there. My fault for the first several months that I remember trying this was that I would only be able to go in it for 
a couple seconds and then I'd come back down and it's because I was just passively going into it. You have to be in the present moment. You have to really be aware of what it takes to stay up there. And as you practice more and more, it will all come together and you will feel like you're floating on your arms, which you are, and that will feel awesome and prepare you for handstands and other inversions to come. Okay, hope that helps and have fun with that. Thank you.